Ladies and gentlemen, the man bringing you underground publications that the government doesn't want you to read, Shane from Liberty Under Attack Publications. Hello, Shane. Thanks for being on the show. Hey, man, Wally. I certainly appreciate the, the invitation, and uh, I like that. I like that opener. <laughs> Thanks, like man. Opener. Yeah, it's something I've been uh, trying to work on for each guest. Um, the inspiration comes from the higher side chats. I don't know if you ever listened to his podcast. He's really good. Um, but I, I, I uh, listen to one or two of them, but not a yeah. Not a it's a lot of yeah, a lot of conspiracy stuff. I mean. Uh, it's something I listen to for entertainment, you know, more than uh, being a conspiracy theorist, I guess. But it's just more entertainment for me, uh, you know, especially after listening to, um, you know, a bunch of libertarian podcasts and getting very angry with what our government's doing. <laughs> right, right. So I understand that. Yeah. So who is Shane Radliff? Well, um, I guess uh, for I guess to to start, I'm a free market anarchist, uh, crypto anarchist. Uh, I'm coming up on uh, about four years now. I uh, started out uh, actually in the conspiratorial rabbit hole, so that was my my uh, mm. my my where I where I started. Bill Cooper, secret societies, uh, that sort of thing, and uh, then I started okay. on Attack Radio back in February of 2015. And uh, a few months later, after uh, you know talking to some anarchists quite often. Uh, I uh, made the leap and uh, spent about the next uh, seven or eight months reading uh, reading up on Austrian economics, the philosophy, uh, all that sort of stuff. And uh, then I kind of right. uh, got to a point and I said, you know, I understand the economics enough. Like, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not no uh, Bob Murphy or Tom Woods, but I get it enough. I understand, you know, the free markets, free market and voluntary interactions. That's the way to go. Um, but one mm -hmm. thing I, I saw that was was really lacking, uh, or at least uh, at least uh, what was what was visible to me was uh, mm -hmm. solutions to actually find freedom in the here and now. Uh, so right. I uh, put out, two, I guess, two pretty massive, or one, one massive series called the Direct Action Series, um, basically where we just uh, explore solutions for seven months straight, and this was uh, live radio. Uh, so we mm -hmm. went through all sorts of stuff uh, on uh, LUA Radio, and uh, then soon after I found a freedom strategy called Vanu, and uh, started the Vani podcast in 2017, January of 2017. And uh, basically, uh, I just, uh, I'm an anarchist who focuses basically like 95% of my, my time and effort uh, on solutions. And that's uh, no different with uh, Liberty Attack Publications. That's, uh, that's our focus over there, too. Uh, so that's, uh, I guess, kind of, kind of my niche uh, is uh, solutions. Yeah, and I, li I like the fact that you focus on solutions than just constantly talking about the problems which some sites or podcasts will do and um it's it's almost like we share a similar passion because it's the same way with anarcho inc it's a free market business revolution and i think a true free market and gray and black markets will suffocate a government it's something i constantly repeat in my head and the more like-minded people we have in the market and selling goods and services, um, the, the more this economy can grow. You know, um, it's something I'm actually um, thinking about doing a pod, a solo podcast shortly on. Mm -hmm. um, um, actually, earlier today, um, I recorded with uh, Kevin Gary, who does the Six Figure Grind and oh, Two Hundred and Fifty K yeah. Society. Great guy. Uh, I didn't even think he was, you know, libertarian minded, but he is. And um, you know, I told him I've been coming across a couple of folks who've been podcasting for a few years, but have been struggling to make an income. And the whole point of you know, anarcho-capitalism and libertarianism is the free market. So we got to get this to work. And if we don't, then we look like a bunch of fools, right? Sure. Uh, yeah. Sure. So what brought you to your political views? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big question. Uh, really, I guess it would have been uh, 2013 or 2014. I have a hard time keeping track now. But uh, mm -hmm. I, got, I, got really in, I got into politics for about six months. 
and right. and uh, I voted in one election, and I uh, put together one uh, one rally, uh, like a you know like a little rally or protest uh, against the mm -hmm. war on drugs on the campus I, I went to college at. Mm -hmm. And uh, after about six months, I realized that uh, you know the whole voting thing, the whole pol the political overstating thing, wasn't wasn't. Uh, I really didn't see too many uh, too many you know, too many uh, positives uh, coming from there. So I right. I moved on. Uh, I kind of just continued my journey and tried to learn. Went through a, a, a few different phases. Uh, like I said, the cons the conspiratorial sort of stuff, uh, Bill Cooper mm -hmm. constitutionalism. And then, and also went through my Alex Jones phase too. I think most libertarians and anarchists have their little Alex Jones <laughs> yeah. phase, regrettably in some regard. But uh, hey, it's, it seems like it's a pretty pretty uh, normal normal step. And uh, I guess for after that, this would have been uh, I guess 2014. I got into uh, I guess uh, I call them sovereign citizens in quotes, um, but it's the mm -hmm. uh, it's the stuff where you know you uh, say magic words in court. And uh, the government just leaves you alone, and uh, you do you pursue all these strategies, uh, you know, paperwork, and uh, somehow uh, this paperwork, you know, gains you your freedom. Um, right. So I went through that for a little while, and uh, uh, thankfully I got out of it before I did anything stupid. Uh, but uh, then, yeah, like I said, you know, I, I kind of came down to just uh, you know constitutionalism. I, I really was kind of I was kind of lost. It's like, well, you know. Um, you know, anarchism, you know, uh, I, I don't trust people enough to, for them not to have a government. And uh, I guess constitutionalism is the most limited government that we've had. So I guess I'll go with that. You know, I, I guess that's what I am kind of uh, uh, right. very, very, I wasn't, I wasn't really happy with it, but that's, that's where I was. And uh, mm -hmm. then, yeah, like I said, I, I talked to some anarchists and uh, kind of, uh, you know, just more worked through some inconsistencies, inconsistencies in my head. And uh mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was once. Uh, once it clicked, it clicked. It didn't take long. It only took, uh, uh, I mm. guess, just a few months of, of conversations. So, and I, I guess, I guess it's that is kind of uh, long because you know the, the common phrase in anarchists. You know, how, how long how how long did it take you to become an anarchist? Well, you know, <laughs> a weekend on YouTube. Well, it wasn't like that for me. It was uh, a little more, <laughs> a little more engaged, a little more engaged. But um, no, and I I can respect that. Um, you know the you can get lost in the political philosophy you know especially when you you know take your first couple of red pills and you know like you said finding somebody like alex jones or the uh corporate uh report you know guys like that uh, really make you question you know the higher powers that be and then i can respect um trying to find your way there um the thing and and i and i do the same sometimes and i think the important thing is not not to get too caught up in in where you are on the, in the spectrum right um and you know to steal a, a line from uh a matt kibb um from free the people which is you know don't hurt people and don't take their stuff right right and and then there's the the economy side of politics which if you've read any decent economics book um you would know that you need um capitalism for for to have a sustainable economy right right um so i can definitely under, uh, you know respect you know um you know it's because there can be hip hypocrisy and the last thing you want to be is a hypocrite right mm -hmm. um right but it's it, it's it is so yeah. hard to i guess throw up i guess throw throw away a lot of the, the beliefs that you held it's it's not a, it's not an easy thing for a lot of people to do i mean it wasn't for me for for mm -hmm. a few months at least um when i really dug into anarchism but um, yeah, yeah, same. And, and it goes against everything that you've ever been told. So it's it's not for for some. It's a lot easier than others. I guess I'll put it, I'll put it that way. For definitely, like when I uh, first discovered libertarianism, I think I was definitely still uh, a bootlicker. Like I said, no, no, you got to respect the police, and we have to have limited government. Otherwise, there'd be pure chaos, right? But then when you discover guys like Larkin Rose and um, and and then yeah like the corporate report and agorism and things like that it's just like well I guess we really don't need government 
and there's a word that's been sticking in my head lately and there's a book I need to read called Spontaneous Order mm-hmm. uh, which is interesting I don't know if you have had a chance to read that one yourself um, I, no I have not no I have not yeah I, 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 apparently the author has gone really extreme alt-right mm-hmm. Nazi maybe which is something that needs to be investigated by somebody is how do we lose some of these great minds um, to to the movement like the alt right, um, but uh, we're not going to do that in today's podcast. We're we're trying to promote the the businesses that are doing awesome things like yours. So with that said, what brought you to start Liberty Under Attack? Uh, yeah, so um, like I said, Liberty Under Attack Radio was started, yeah, the, the podcast radio show started in 2015, mm-hmm. but it really wasn't until, um, and I guess I, I had that kind of brand. Uh, so right. it, it, this would have been, I guess, maybe 2016, um, me and a colleague started, rec- we found uh, books that didn't have uh, audiobooks, like An Agoras Primer by Sam Conkin. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we just, we recorded it, and very terrible audio quality because we didn't know what we were doing at that time. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, just tossed it up on the website and on YouTube for free. Um, and also, uh, um, my colleague wrote a couple of anthologies that he recorded audiobooks for, just basically put them up, put them up on the website under LUA Publications, but it wasn't really a serious thing, uh, at all mm-hmm. until about, uh, late 2018. And, uh, I guess I, I, I just thought about it more and there was, uh, there used to be a, excuse me, there used to be a, uh, pub- a publishing outfit called Lumpanics Unlimited. Uh, they were a mm-hmm. radical publishing company, um, that went defunct in 2006, uh, after 30 years okay. of business, uh, now they published uh, really radical stuff. Like uh, Erwin Strauss uh, wrote a book called "How to Make a Nuke in Your Basement." Um, okay. uh, Rayo's book, wow. "The Search for Personal Freedom," uh, was published yeah. under Loom Panics. Um, mm-hmm. There were uh, some some other interesting stuff. Uh, there was one like uh, how to I guess how how to uh, you know be a hitman or something like that, which got him in hot water mm-hmm. uh, towards oh, the wow. end of, uh, towards the end of their thing because that book was found in in, in someone's house and something happened. Um, and then uh, oh, a bunch okay. of survivalist stuff, a bunch of conspiracy stuff, basically anything on like the political fringes, um, mm. they would they would publish. And there was a lot of great solution stuff there. Um, mm. Yeah, in 2006 they went to uh, they uh, you know it went defunct. And uh, I, I guess I kind of decided in 2018 that I was going to go, uh, you know, go full forward with this, uh, mm. uh, Liberty Attack Publications. So we've got four books available right now, and uh, the goal mm-hmm. is to hopefully release one a month. And uh, nice. then, uh, audiobooks, too. Uh, plan on doing audiobooks for every single one of them, but that takes the longest. Formatting the books sure. uh, and stuff doesn't take that long. It's not that hard to do once, you, once you've done it a few times. Uh, mm-hmm. So... Audiobooks will be there. Uh, just uh, it's going to take a little time to get those uh, to get the, to get those up. But I think what's really unique, and I think what's going to be our main source of income as we go forward, is mm-hmm. uh, something that's a, a page on the website libertarianattack.com uh, called Publish mm-hmm. with Us. And uh, yeah. so we're we're seeking out individuals who are looking for publishers. Uh, so if you uh, just want your book published or promoted by us, you know we can do that. More than happy to. Um, Great. But we also uh, help new authors with every step of the publishing process. So uh, let's say you finish your mm-hmm. first manuscript and you want you want a, a team to tear it apart and make it uh, you know make it that much better and ready for publication. Uh, well, we'll do mm-hmm. proofreading, editing for it. Um, we will do, uh, as I said, the paperback and Kindle formatting. Uh, for if if you've never done it before, it can be a very daunting task, and you might order like twelve proof copies before you get it right. And they aren't expensive; right. the proof copies aren't, but uh, it's a pain, and it takes them like a week to get there every time. So if you're try if you have a, a deadline set, and uh, you've got to go through like seven or eight, uh, you know, proof copies to get it right for for public uh, for formatting, uh, it can be mm-hmm. a, a major major pain and setback. So uh, I've done that a lot, and uh, it's it's a very it's something that we specialize at. And then also too, you've got for nowadays, yeah. um, if you really want to maximize your income and your reach, you have to have audiobooks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for a lot of folks, that's a brand new thing; they have no idea how to approach that. So, um, like, let's say that uh, um, let's say that uh, John wants to uh, you know, John, this this random person, John has a book, mm-hmm. and he actually wants to do the narration for it. Well, great, we can do the the post production work on it and uh, get it ready for Audible, uh, get it ready for Amazon. Uh, or yeah. if uh, if they just want to outsource the entire thing, we we I've got uh, I I narrate audiobooks, and uh, I've got a very talented uh, very talented woman that uh, that helps me. Uh, with that as well, she'll, be, she'll actually be doing uh, the. Uh, she'll be playing the female character in Hashtag Agora uh, once we uh, nice. once we get that done. So uh, yeah, basically, um, and it, basically just assistance for new authors throughout the entire publishing process. Uh, and uh, I think most importantly, not, right. maybe not most importantly, but um, audiobooks are really where it's at now. So um, 
It's for it's, sure. It's a must. Got to have it. No, and I, and we talked offline. I love this service, and uh, I'm and why, that's why I wanted to have you on the show is to promote the service. And links will be in the show notes uh, for folks. But this is a great service because I see tons of libertarian podcasts who have an ebook like myself, the Affiliate Anarchy and ebook. Um, and um, I didn't know I haven't put it on Amazon yet. I've been thinking about printing it, but don't have the time. And so I think this is a great service for folks who are uh, thinking about doing an ebook or you know need some help or guidance. Um, I, I highly recommend that you check out the service from Liberty Under Attack. So uh, a question came into my mind, uh, a couple of things when, you, you know, you said, you know, with some of these publications, you almost, uh, some folks might have gotten in trouble. Is that a concern for you today that with, I mean, uh, the book that comes to mind, I'm sure you heard of is the Anarchist Cookbook. Like it was one of these books mm -hmm. that was like the forbidden fruit to have. And actually, there's a great documentary on Netflix I recommend you check out if you haven't and for our listeners to check out um, about the author of The Anarchist Cookbook. And um, it was interesting because it was at a, t a time in this country where, you know, things were going to hell in a handbag, which – for some of us today, um, some people feel like that today. So I'm wondering why, you know, maybe because we're all creating this sort of content now, if we feel that way. But anyways, so many questions there uh, going down a rabbit hole. But is that something you're afraid of or, or do you try to steer away from publishing those sort of books? Well, and that's that is uh, definitely a good question because uh, obviously, uh, you know, I'm trying to make myself as invulnerable to the coercion as humanly possible. Uh, and, right. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, of course, uh, I I definitely keep that in mind. Um, but as far as right now, um, no authors have come forward with books that uh, could could put us in hot water. Um, right. Now there is uh, Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage, uh, Field Field Manual Number One, a three part solution to the state by Ben Stone, uh, which is a little mm. controversial, but um, you know that's been out for that's been out for 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 quite a while, and he published it and sold right. copies of it. So um, I'm not worried. I'm not uh, too worried about that right now. I don't see it being an issue. Uh, now, could an mm -hmm. author come forward and say, "I really like this is the perfect publishing outfit for this. I want you to do it." Um, I guess it'll depend upon upon the book and uh, I guess the circumstances. Um, but uh, sure. certainly certainly something uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, it, it it definitely is. Now, I guess uh, on a, on a, on a similar note, we're talking about coercion here. Uh, and I right. think this is something I want to mention with the publish with us thing, is uh, one of the best things about living type publications versus, versus a big publishing outfit is we don't believe in intellectual property. So you're gonna own 100% mm. rights to your book. You can do whatever you want with it. We'll help you whatever whatever you want to do. Um, we're more than happy to help with it, and uh, we aren't mm -hmm. going to make you sign your life away or anything like that. So you're That's great. Retain, retain the rights to your book, of course. Um, mm -hmm. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is uh, obviously my book, Bonnie's Strategy for Self Liberation, is under LUA Publications. Uh, but like mm -hmm. Second Realm Book on Strategy was written by a guy named or guy pseudonymously named Smuggler in XYZ. And uh, uh, like uh, again, Seditions, Virgin, Sabotage is Ben Stone. Um, I go out mm -hmm. and ask these people. I mean, uh, these people don't believe in IP either. But uh, you know, if I'm going to publish right. a book, I you know have the respect to go to go ask them. Um, now, hashtag Agora is uh, was published mm -hmm. anonymously on a website called Anaplex.net. So obviously, mm -hmm. I just I thought the book was so important, I just you know kind of went forward with it. Um, so that's another mm -hmm. aspect that we've kind of got to look out for. But the the, the things I, I published that are that are others, I ask if I can, or there are obscure volume publications that uh, I don't want to see disappear uh, that I had mm -hmm. to struggle to find on the internet and then digitize, type them into a word document, and then put them up for mm -hmm. free. Uh, on the online, so um, I guess that's another another maybe a related, maybe unrelated, uh, I guess tangent to your question. No, 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 it's all all good. I mean, I go on tangents myself, and lots of rapid thoughts come to my head. But no, no, that was great. Um, you know, it's it is interesting, you know, because you had mentioned, you know, um, the I think it was the. You said the uh, making a nuclear bomb or whatever was found in somebody's house and they got in trouble. And the same thing happened with the anarchist cookbook. Actually, I think um, 
I think in Ruby Ridge or Waco, Texas, uh, Texas, excuse me, they they found that book. Uh, also, the Columbine shooting, they found the book. So the book has been found in you know multiple um, quote unquote uh, terrorism attacks, mm. but. What's interesting is if you watch the documentary, the author's like, you know, most of this stuff I found in military handbooks that were readily available at the library. It's not like I wrote this. I just combined it into one book. <laughs> right. And with, yeah, so, um, so actually the How to Make Nukes in Your Basement one has never really gotten anyone in trouble. Um, you can still get yeah. that. You can still download, download that online. Um, oh, that's awesome. But, that's but so like funny. for, for, for Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage, um, obviously mm -hmm. Ben put a disclaimer in there and all that. Um, but mm -hmm. it's basically just a, a modified version of like an OSS manual, like Office of Sedition Sabotage. Like it's a it's a it's a government manual turned into like an anarchist book. So like it, it, yeah, we're, <laughs> so it's it's, it's very, you're just very taking from way. the government, which is funny. You know, it's it's like it's they wrote this crap. You know, we're just bringing it to light. You know, and right. it's it, it it's interesting. So you also run another podcast, and I might butcher the name, but the the uh, Vanu podcast is that how you say it? Correct. Or, yep. or Vanu. Vanu. Uh, Vanu. Yep, it's Vanu. Vanu. Yep. Um, and actually, we we found out. Sorry, sorry. Just, so we found out like two years after we started the podcast, someone mm -hmm. actually put like the phonetical spelling in one of the publications. This was again like two years after. It's actually pronounced okay. Vanu, but we've oh. been pronouncing it for like two years Vanu, so we just continued with that. <laughs> so silly mistake, uh, but yeah. <laughs> are we supposed to know? <laughs> That's all right. I'm constantly butchering words. Um, so, uh, what made you start start that podcast? Right. So, uh, so it was probably in, uh, I guess, uh, we'll say like March 2016 when we were in, in the middle of the direct action series. Uh, my uh, co-host of the Vomit Podcast, he hasn't been, he hasn't done it in a while. He hasn't been on there, but uh, he he pointed me in the direction of this book called Vomit of the Search of Personal Freedom by a guy named Rayo. There was mm -hmm. little to no information on the inter internet about him. Um, there mm -hmm. were a couple obscure uh, book reviews, a couple might be an article too published by Rayo that was mirrored in okay. some place. But I didn't know what I was getting myself into. It was thirty dollars, which is I never spend that much on books. You can get all the Austrian like all, all the Austrian economics books, like used ones for like two dollars, it seems. So okay. like, that was the most I'd ever spent on a book and I didn't know what I was going to get. So mm -hmm. I, I got it and I read it and it was incredible. Uh, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. So we actually did uh, the last two episodes of the Direct Action series. Uh, well, I guess mm -hmm. back up. We we actually uh, I digitized that, and we did an audiobook for it, um, which is available nice. at uh, libertyunderattack.com uh, as well. And uh, so we finished the Direct Action series talking about Vaughn, and we did like two, three-hour episodes on it, live radio. It was, it was were some crazy nights. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, <clears throat> So yeah, we uh, it was basically a, an idea I tossed around. Um, after that, I returned to the publication. I, I found some other publication, uh, some other Vani publications, and uh, I was mm -hmm. really, really inspired by it. So um, I guess uh, I should, you know, I already buried the lead. But um, Vani was an awkward contraction of the term of the words voluntary, not vulnerable, and the idea is to become as invulnerable to coercion uh, as humanly mm -hmm. possible, both from public coercers, governments, and private coercers, just violators of person and property. So I, I'd been kind of learning mm -hmm. about these strategies, and I wanted to live on a sailboat. That was like that's my that was my dream, and that is my dream now. Like my, my dream down the road sometime is to live on a sailboat. So like I, I looked into a bunch, mm -hmm. of the, bunch of the other strategies and, and learned more about the philosophy. And I asked uh, um, one of my 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 co-hosts on there now, uh, Kyle. It's like, hey mm -hmm. man, we need to start this podcast. Like we have to do it, and uh, he agreed. Yeah. And uh, we did it. And uh, season one was the philosophy of Anu. So we went. Uh, uh, we went through, uh, you know, all the weeds and uh, all that sort of stuff, all the really important, uh, I guess, foundational stuff. Um, season mm -hmm. two is the practice of Vani, where we just went off of what Rayo said, um, talking about strategies, uh, you know, lifestyle mm -hmm. changes and pursuance of freedom. So he lived in his, uh, he pursued van nomadism to start, so he lived in his van. Uh, then he yeah. pursued uh, wilderness Vanu and the Siskiyou region, which is northern California and uh, southern Oregon. He mm -hmm. lived in tents. Uh, wilderness Vanu, pretty radical and pretty hardcore. Um, wow. But uh, uh, so we covered what he talked about in his books, which is a bunch of different strategies uh, beyond that. It's not just this like uh, live in the woods survivalist thing. Uh, like, like I said, there's something on right. a sailboat, intentional communities, uh, ethical enclave trading, which actually predates agorism, but it is agorism. Sam Conkin actually mentioned Rayo and Vanu 
uh, in quite a few publications. Okay. Uh, so Interesting. safe to say that uh, ethical enclave trading was a precursor to agorism, which is something I did not expect to find uh, in this uh, yeah in this investigation. But it was just uh, just yeah really really cool. Um, Very cool. So, um, yeah, basically, uh, uh, you know, see, I was talking about season two, practice of Uh So we went through a bunch of strategies he talked about, and then season three, which is the current season, uh, which hasn't mm -hmm. been uh, updated on the podcast feed in a little while. Uh, just due to, uh, I guess, a tumultuous last year for me. Uh, but sure. uh, we, we basically just kind of develop, develop uh, Vanu into the modern day. So we do talk a little philosophy, uh, mm -hmm. but we basically focus on, um, on uh, the practice of Vanu today. Uh, so the, the, current series, right. uh, the current series we're on is crypto anarchism. So we've talked about, uh, we've talked about uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, decentralized marketplaces like uh, Open Bazaar and BISC. We've talked about Xeronet, which mm -hmm. is a way to decentralize the internet, essentially. We've talked about encryption and cryptocurrencies and all, all of these mm. sorts of things and how these tools and technologies can make you more vulnerable to coercion. So that's kind of... Uh, that's kind of the inspiration uh, for TVP and where we are today, and uh, it's uh, it's it's the foundation for basically everything that I do, uh, including right. publications and uh, and uh, Darklands, which is one of my open source projects. And everything I do is basically just trying to um, trying to give people the tools to live on today. Yeah, um, a couple of questions from that. So, is this? something you're able to do full time and full disclosure you don't have to answer that question if you don't want but i'm just trying to understand where people are at in their journeys for me i'm still working full time for um you know basically a corporate job uh looking to escape that uh through all of my uh businesses through anarcho inc and a couple of uh non um labeled libertarian businesses just just for saking of uh, a backup i guess mm -hmm. so is this a is this something you're able to full time or you're still doing as a side hustle yeah so um so ba i i guess the last stuff uh, the last proper full-time job i had was uh was actually in may of last year and so mm -hmm. i kind of quit that abruptly moved to austin texas and i, mm -hmm. I had a couple other a uh, couple other jobs there but uh, it was work from home kind of freelance sort of stuff uh, okay. And uh, basically, after that point, um, I uh, still did kind of some, uh, some some freelancing and things of that nature. Uh, but right. um, I, I basically just live very, very frugally, um, trying to. Um, right. That's that's basically been my, my strategy for the past uh, past six months or so. Um, yeah. I was basically living frugally and uh, spent a month and a half in Acapulco, which is very it's very cheap there. And, uh, yeah. and then before I uh, before I got uh, when I got back to Austin, I did uh, the wilderness bonnie thing for for a couple of weeks. And now I'm uh, um, I do have a, I do I do have a, a job. It's not a it's, I guess it's it's not a, a full time job like that. Uh, but uh, right. I do um, I guess I have uh, some I guess more um, more fixed work like that. And then uh, I do have mm -hmm. uh, a couple of side hustles like Elliot publications uh, that I do as well. Nice. So it's um, not not there yet. Uh, I'm still working working towards it myself. Well, yeah, working towards that, and that's important. So, you had mentioned uh, Anarcho Poco. So, were you part of the Anarcho Poco, the um, with the Dollar Vigilante and and that group? Were you involved in some of that stuff there down there? Uh, not really, no. Um, I, I was there from uh, I guess it would have been the uh, beginning of November till about mid December. And mm. um, I no, I really didn't see anybody from the Anar Anarchapulco sort of crew. Um, okay. Met some, met some really cool folks, but um, but yeah, not yeah, didn't really didn't really do much uh, do much with with those from that crew. Really, yeah, really okay. didn't meet many of them. But yeah, met a lot of uh, met a lot of great anarchists down there and such. So um, that's that's awesome. What do you think? I have my own ideas, but what do you think drives a person? Um, to become somewhat of a digital nomad as you, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of learn to with like either living in the woods, living off the grid, living on a sailboat, seasteading, living in RV, you know, uh, moving to, I've even heard to, yeah, moving to Mexico, moving to Puerto Rico, um, basically trying to avoid the government or taxation and, uh, 
what I mean, it could be psychological, financial, but what are your thoughts that drives a person to do that? Right. So, I mean, it really, it really just depends on the individual. Uh, like, uh, yeah. for, for van nomad, for van nomads, that's a very popular kind of. It's still alternative, but it's becoming. It's a very kind of mainstream thing on YouTube. If you type in van dwelling, it's yeah. all over. Uh, so I, I actually interviewed a, uh, I interviewed a guy, an off grid van nomad in Australia, and uh, he mm -hmm. didn't come at it from a politi He didn't pursue that lifestyle for a political reason uh, or anything mm -hmm. like that. The rent was just too high in Australia, so he decided <laughs> right. to move into a van. Um, yeah. for, for, for some other folks, they, uh, um, they want, uh, some financial freedom or work freedom. And, right. uh, one way that you can, uh, uh, one way you can do that, uh, or I guess to get started is if you cut your expense, if you cut your living expenses, uh, right. and then, like, uh, by moving into a van or by, uh, you know, wilderness fawning, which again, like there, Vani was much more than that, but like, these are just, you know, examples. If you, if you cut your expenses, then you, 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 you can afford to make less money and, uh, mm -hmm. you can have that more of that financial freedom. Um, and I guess freedom of your time. Uh, yeah. so I guess that's another approach. And then obviously for, for me and for, uh, for, uh, you know, a lot of anarchists, the digital nomadism thing is, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a way to, uh, I guess, minimize the, uh, minimize the role of governments, uh, in our lives. Um, right. I suppose, I suppose also too the digital nomadism things, some people love to travel and, Mm. They can't like you, you. can't do a lot of traveling with, uh, with if you work uh, nine to five in Chicago and yeah. every single day. You can't do that. Uh, right. So I mean, there there are a lot of uh, a lot of reasons people decide to you know become digital nomads. But um, I think one right. one common thread throughout is uh, financial freedom and freedom of time, uh, working for yeah. yourself and not working for somebody else. Uh, so that would yeah be my yeah. answer. Yeah, it, it's something uh, as I started uh, Anarcho Inc. that uh, even prior to Anarcho Inc. that we've talked about for several years, me and my wife, and it's getting closer to that time. I think in the next year or so, you know, um, we've been talking about uh, selling our house and living in an RV and just traveling nice. the country. Yeah, um, just because, yeah, I'm just. Uh, for me, it is that financial freedom, the uh, f freedom of my own time, and uh, and to uh, earlier today, my podcast with Kevin Gary, it's the new fu money, you know, the ability to work for yourself, basically. That's the new fu money, you know. Uh, it's you know some people getting are getting into this yeah maybe to start the next facebook or the next google some of us are getting in this too it's just to sustain a lifestyle of you know living off grid or living in a, a boat or you know and yeah it, to me and then i guess i'll answer my own question what's driving me there is the rat race basically you know it, it's just a giant fucking rat race of constantly competing for it's even politics at work you know what do people think about you at work mm -hmm. you got to dress nice and look nice and you have to act a certain way and i'm just fucking tired of it yeah. you know it, it's it, it's sad it almost it's it's a it's a fake american dream it, we were sold i think and uh yeah um anyways not not to dwell on the <laughs> on that so um how did you build your businesses and that can be the liberty under attack how did you go about it that can be technical philosophical whatever you want to answer sure sure so uh so when i started liberty under attack radio and i guess uh um, also vanu too i had full-time jobs mm -hmm. and i mean i never really I, I kind of realized, and this is some great advice from Michael Dean, um, but mm. basically, you know, don't quit your day job because uh, right. then if, if, if you're beholden to, uh, you know, get amassing a large audience, if you're beholden to, uh, like, a, a large audience provides you with donations or with affiliates and th things like that, then you're limited on what mm -hmm. you can talk about and what you can say. Um, exactly. So, so basically for LUA and TVP, at least when they started out, uh, it was uh, really just... Um, I didn't have, really have any expectation of it. I'd give everything away for free anyway. So, um, right. I mean, that, like there was, there was, there was really no business model there or anything. Um, mm. 
so I mean, with with the podcast, and that's that's really all I did up until, like I said, until you know maybe towards the end of 2018, or maybe in the middle of 2018, we'll say. And okay. um, then yeah, earlier publications started to kind of come into the mix, and I saw a possibility for that. Uh, and then another mm -hmm. project that I'm working on, Dark Lance, um, mm -hmm. privacy focus, privacy focused freelancing marketplace utilizing Bitcoin for payments. I've been working on that. I love it since uh, since January of last year. Which started out, started out as Vanu Coin. Um, but yeah, it was, it was supposed to be like a one-stop shop for self-liberation, but it was there's no possible way with it without you know like VC funding or without a, a big crew of developers that you can actually build something like that. So we had to yeah. really focus it down into like something that could be very practical for Vanu. And uh, again, like a, a, and what were we talking about here, like the financial freedom sort of aspect. Um, one of the that's right. that's the biggest hurdle for a lot of folks is was kind of the is kind of you know work you know making money. So we figured right. well we can build a platform like this based off of privacy and Bitcoin and make it open source and decentralized and uh, mm -hmm. it seems like a, a, a cool thing. So we haven't built that yet, mm -hmm. but there will be um, there be, will be a way for for funding um, for for us. I love so it. That's, so that's, it, uh, that's there's a market for it. Sure. Uh, you may not know this, but there's uh, I did an interview early on in Anarcho Inc. Uh, with a company called uh, Gray Market. No, sorry, Gray Man Design. Ah. Uh, they are a uh, black and gray market graphic design company, completely anonymous. They barter or accept Bitcoin for their work. Uh, they do um, graphic design work. They do web design work and um, a great little company. And uh, actually more recently, they actually asked me if I would join the team. <laughs> and I was like, sure. And it's just project based work as it comes in. Uh, you know, we're paid an hourly rate. Uh, and, and it's, um, I love the idea. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I I don't know how su successful they are, but um, I, I told them if they could make it work, it would be very interesting. So I, I can, you know, just having these conversations with individuals like yourself, I see the market for this all, Dark Lance and, um, you know, uh, Gray Man Design. Um, I love that. I love, the, I love that name of that business. That's awesome. Yeah, and I love, the, yeah, it's a great name for the business. So I... There's more and more of us kind of coming out of the closet, so to speak. Um, I'm actually interviewing this um, CEO of a company who will be out on a sailboat, and I forget the name of it, but it's kind of like DuckDuckGo search engine that doesn't track you, but it also involves some sort of uh, cryptocurrency when you use it. So that'll be interesting conversation to see, you know, how, how we came across that. Sure. Uh, yeah, and, and the thing we need to watch out for with this is um, it is a movement and you'll, I can almost bet that soon enough on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, they'll come out with their own cryptocurrencies, um, which I would be... Uh, you know, kind of against using because it's, sure. you know, they're it's like hypocritical of them, and it's almost like they've uh, stolen the idea. Yeah, they're just they uh, just be digital tokens. I mean, there there wouldn't be right. anything cool or innovative about them. They'd be centralized. They could control who used them and who would right. them. And yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's nothing new. It's not interesting. <laughs> not interesting at as all as 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 Bitcoin and some of the other altcoins, right? Um, so, but I love the idea. I hope you can succeed at it. It's something I would join, uh, seeking financial freedom, you know? Sure. Um, so where can people find you online? Yeah. So I'd say probably the, uh, and obviously I'll put out, uh, uh, you know, like a fascist book and Twitter. You can find me on there, uh, at LUA, mm -hmm. uh, at LUA truth on fascist book and, uh, at LUA radio mm -hmm. on Twitter pretty active on both of those platforms unfortunately kind of need to be though um libertyintertech.com right. is uh the main hub for liberty Attack publications uh all of yep. the, everything uh, all the books are available there uh and yes of course we accept and prefer uh prefer bitcoin uh, mm -hmm. they're still they're obviously on amazon too it'd be hard to hard to do this and make money if they weren't on amazon so they are on there too right. if that's if that's your preference um, for the Vonu podcast, uh, it's vonupodcast.com, mm -hmm. and uh, Vonu is V as in Victor, O, 
and is at nancyupodcast.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're interested in Darklands, uh, we're still, I just released the white paper for it, the first, uh, I guess, the first white paper uh, mm-hmm. last month. Uh, and you can find that uh, by visiting tinyurl.com forward slash Darklands white paper. Uh, the website awesome. Is All of those net. links. Yeah, the the website's darklands.net, but it's not. Um, I mean, it's the the website's okay. It's functional, but I've got to do some do right. some more work on it. So. Oh, I understand how that goes. All of those links will be in the show notes. Um, and the one thing I actually forgot to mention. So Shane reached out to me, and uh, it was an awesome business conversation. He was like, "Listen, we need to team up, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Books and coffee." Go well together. What we what can we do? Um, so we've traded coupon codes, and we'll be re- releasing those soon on social media. Um, yeah, should should me- should mention that. Yeah, so so obviously, yeah. listeners, ten percent off uh, at your your entire order at uh, uh, Libertarian Tech Publications, libertariantech.com. Just use the code Coffee yep. Ten. So yes. Thank you. And if you sign up to support me on Patreon or subscribe to our Bitbacker, you get a lifetime 15% off at Liberty Under Attack Publications, and the coupon code would be revealed uh, after you subscribe. Uh, so all all great stuff happening. For sure. Uh, yeah, thanks, Change, for being on the show, man. Hey, I, I sincerely appreciate it, and uh, you know, I look forward to, uh, to working with you in the future. Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon.